come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. It's your favorite movie podcast. We come at you every Saturday night on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and more. If you found us on one of those fine services, why don't you go ahead and give us a like, a star rating, or subscribe. Tell us that you like us, and uh, it helps us to find other like-minded individuals like yourself out there on the interwebs. <laughs> so what we do is we review movies. We watch them here kind of blind. We go into them as they're chosen round robin by one of the internet radio superstars. Sean. Toby. Holly. And I'm Colin. And Michaela is off this evening. So tonight's movie was chosen by, oh, actually, we should probably tell people uh, what we're going to do. We're going to we're gonna talk about the movie for a little bit. Spoiler warning for tonight's film. And then uh, we'll get to uh, some listener mail. Uh, we encourage you to write in. You can write to us on Facebook at... Uh, Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or via email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And we'll read your comments on the air. Then we'll do our final wrap up so you can find out what we really thought of tonight's movie. What was who chose tonight's movie? Holly, what did we watch tonight? We watched Deep Blue Sea, not to be confused with the Deep Blue Sea 2011 Tom Hiddleston romantic drama. Terrible. I think huh. I'm the only oh. person that watched it. You might be. I, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that watched it. But don't See, just because you love these people doesn't mean you need to watch I, I all watch, their movies. I watch all their movies <laughs> and I regret most of them. I regret most of them. Also, a movie called <laughs> The Deep Blue or something like that. I think so. Deep Blue, yeah, I'm sure. I think so. Yeah. There was Deep Blue I think that something. Was a Luke Besson movie. There was Deep Blue that's something the, that sang uh, Breakfast at Tiffany. There was, yes. <laughs> yeah, Deep Blue something. There you go. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, oh, yeah. We, but this was uh, what Deep year Blue Sea. Was this, uh, this was Deep this Blue Sea, unleashed? 1999. Yes, spoilers for an almost 20 year old movie. <laughs> right, but in yeah. case you haven't seen it, some people haven't, right? That's so, very true. <laughs> first time through. Yep, my almost first time. Didn't, almost didn't know it was a shark movie. I really didn't. I did not know what I was getting into until I looked at the cover of the movie. So. Well, who uh, is responsible for this uh, uh, bigger, smarter, faster, meaner movie? Um, it was directed by Rennie Harlan. How would we know Rennie Harlan? Um, I think most people know him from uh, Die Hard 2, uh, Cliffhanger, Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Mm, cliffhanger. Uh, <laughs> Fucking classic. Right? Cliffhanger. <laughs> nobody yeah. says Cutthroat Island, huh? The one that- nobody. No. no nobody. Yeah, nobody. No. But have we all seen Cutthroat Island? <laughs> no, but I, I know the story. Well, it's just it's the movie that sank Carol Co. Pictures. Yeah. Like, that was the one that killed him. Yeah. Um, wasn't uh, Rennie Harlan nominated for like a Raspberry Award or something? I'm that? sure he, yeah. many times in his career. Raspberry. He was responsible yeah, for, uh, well, it seems like he was on like a pretty good streak mm-hmm. of yeah. movies. Um, like I saw his first one, which was OK Prison. And then he graduated immediately from there to uh, Elm Street 4, The mm-hmm. Dream Master. Uh, the Adventures of Ford Fairlane. He almost made uh, Andrew Dice Clay a movie star there briefly. <laughs> and then Die Hard 2. And then from there, it was big budget uh, movies like the aforementioned uh, Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. The Long Kiss Goodnight. Ah, yes. The Long Kiss Goodnight. I love The Long Kiss yeah, Goodnight. That's a good that movie. A See movie. our previous podcast for our thoughts on that one. <laughs> that's right. We have Don't watch one. it directly after Last Action Hero. That's all I have to say. There you go. About that one. <laughs> It's not a good uh, double feature. You'll be tired by the time you get to that next. <laughs> but somewhere in there, that was where his like uh, his I don't know if it was a rising star, but like where he was like the guy who was responsible for doing these big budget action movies. Mm-hmm. I think it was like because Long Kiss Goodnight. It seems to me it was following Cutthroat Island. I think so. Yes. Which I don't recall that movie being horrible. It's just like really big, huge, bloated. It cost a fortune. Yes. Barely made any money because nobody wanted to see pirate movies at that point in time. But then Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> came along several years later yes. and changed all that. I think it was the nepotism that killed that movie. Yeah. Casting his wife and whatnot. Twice. Mm. Right? Twice. Gina Davis yeah. in that and yes. The Long Kiss Goodnight. Yes. And then uh, Driven. Driven. Mm-hmm. Never saw Driven. Well, that was the movie where, if you remember, uh, the... I remember the advertisements for it at the time, like didn't mention that it starred Sylvester Stallone in as a supporting character. Like he was the number two guy, I think in the cast, he was like an older race car driver. Oh, mentoring that fucking a race movie where they go through the streets oh, of the city and all yeah. that shit. That was him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. That's I remember knowing Sylvester Stallone was in it. <laughs> 
Yeah, because they kept him out. Of, like Stallone was in horrible. actor jail at that point ah. in time. Mm-hmm. He's been in a series of flops, and they're like, "Well, people don't want to see Sylvester Stallone anymore, so we <laughs> won't even advertise he's in the movie." <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I think like everything after that, this is where I get really spotty with my Rennie Harlan. A lot of TV. Well, I know he yeah, did. The, he was the guy who reshot completely. Uh, oh yeah. Exorcist. The, the beginning, beginning. Yeah. Yes. Which was awful. Terrible. Awful. Uh, was it the? Covenant? Yeah, the Covenant. Mm-hmm. That Which movie was about yeah. the Teen Warlocks? I mean, that, it was campy, co- but I enjoyed it. He did. It. Yeah. He did. Uh, uh, oh, God. That fucking car exploding in... Mind Hunters? Mind Hunters, right. That also an LL Cool J. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Val Kilmer is in that movie. I remember, that Christian was a weird, Slater, right? weird I don't think I movie. saw that, but now I kind of want to watch it. It's a weird movie. <laughs> it's, it is worth seeing for its weirdness. Now we know Holly's next pick. Uh, I mean. Serial killers and whatnot. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no! Don't bring it here. No. It's like, <laughs> oh, don't, don't do that. No. 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 no, no. Like no. Watch it. On a shelf for a while before. It did. Yeah. That one sat for a while, and they're just like, yeah, we'll release it. What the hell? Val Kilmer maybe he, was getting big again at the time. I don't know. <laughs> well, he was doing movies like The Thaw and stuff like that. That was. Oh. The Thaw. Was it before or after like Val Kilmer came back? You remember like Wonderland and uh, yeah. The Missing, where he had like this period where he was like in like four movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember Kiss Kiss Land, Bang yeah. Bang. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Mm-hmm. I think that was probably at the end of that because you know, he, he could still act. Deja Vu, that was in there somewhere. But that was a rather serious role for him, and he's not very big in that movie. Yeah. And then Harlan did, um, I know his latest thing was The Legend of Hercules. Not to be mm-hmm. confused with the one with The Rock in it. Oh. Mm-hmm. The one with the guy from the Twilight movies. Is it uh, Kellen Lutz? Oh, Kellen Lutz. Kellen yeah. Lutz? Yeah. The fuck is mm-hmm. this movie? Did they come out? At the it, was a it was a colossal huge bomb. Huge yeah. bomb. Well, yeah. Huge. Yeah. That one did not come up on my radar. At no. All, so. <laughs> and he made a really like small budget horror movie. Uh, it was called Blood Gulch or something like that. It was oh. like set in the Alps and there were Blood Gulch. I think, Nazi zombies or creatures hidden in a bunker or something. I don't know. I saw it and it was like, this is where we're like hard. It was, I think it was maybe a found footage movie. <laughs> oh, like, Jesus. Oh, it's sounding worse and worse. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why do you, no, his why career do you put is yourself. Just gone, you lost me. You put yourself. You lost stuff, me at Colin. Gulch, but now it's just sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened to the man? I don't know. He made too many movies, like Deep Blue Sea. I mean, oh, oh. foreshadowing. Oh. <laughs> Does he really feel that way? <laughs> the suspense. Um, all right. So this movie. Deep this movie. movie. Yeah. This movie. Um, why, Holly? <laughs> Why what, Sean? Why, well, why, why everything? Just you pick where you want to start with that. <laughs> What's this movie about? Let's just go. Let's go with that. Let's how start come at the beginning. DBC. Yeah, how? Um, it's 90, I, 1999. Where are we all at in 1999? 1999, I was about 14. 14? You were 14? 14? I was 13 yeah. years old at this time. I was graduating high school. Math? Mm-hmm. Math? No, yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, Reveal your age, Colin. In my Colin. 20s. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just so, Colin with long hair going. Fucking movies are dumb, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no. At this time, I was about fourteen, so um, I believe the title, the the main song for the movie, LL Cool J. Um, Your favorite. Song. Was this in the? Was it that song in the marketing materials for this movie? I, I, it was big on MTV. Oh, was it? It was. Oh, it was. Oh, and see, I think. And I was really. I was right there in that MTV age. So, <laughs> you know, I dove right in for deepest. Bluest, my head is like a shark's fin. You're goddamn right, Colin. <laughs> my head is like a shark's fin. <laughs> Sung by L. Cool J, the star of this movie, L. Cool J, preacher himself. <laughs> Preach. Also, the music supervisor for this fine film. Oh, wonderful. Mm-hmm. He was like on his way up. We were saying he was in uh, Halloween H two O the year yeah. before this, mm-hmm. and eventually NCIS. And Mindhunters, the movie you Mind will watch in the future. Any given Sunday, dudes. We keep forgetting Come on. Which is a really <laughs> that was good a movie. Good movie. Keep that was a good movie. That was a good movie. That's a good movie. I'm going to watch that one again. And fuck you guys, because he's doing awesome now. Lip Sync Battle Rules. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I love that's that because, show. And he hosts everything. Yeah. If you need, yeah. if you have an award show you need hosted, LL Cool J will do it. Mm-hmm. Whether you want him to or not. And he'll kick his ass. He'll kick his ass, Sean. Willie. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, I love lip sync battle. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's got its moments. You'd maybe describe this movie as a disaster film. Wait, they describe it themselves, Colin. Oh, On the video go. box? It is a, a monster movie, a chase movie, a movie that snaps hold and won't let go. <laughs> because it's about sharks. Sharks. That's right. This movie's about sharks. Did we not mention that yet? This movie's about so. sharks. This movie is How, about I'm sharks. I'm trying to think if there was a, a, like a serious shark movie between. Uh, Jaws: The Revenge. 
It'd be 1987. <laughs> and, uh, wait, are you, uh, uh, are you supposing that that is serious? Movie? Like, or are we just talking about <laughs> that is a shark movie? It's a shark, let's not go, necessarily yeah. serious. Okay, it's a shark okay. movie. You've seen Jaws of Revenge, Somebody's right? Somebody's attempt <laughs> at making a movie. It's a Godzilla shark, shark in that movie yeah. that yells at you. Yeah. <laughs> jumps 50 feet out of the water. Uh-huh. God, that movie's glorious. I like the progression of movie sharks and their length. Like they start out at uh, what was it? Twenty five foot was a monster shark mm-hmm. in Jaws. Three and by the time them. we get to Deep Blue Sea, they're forty five. Oh. <laughs> yeah, behemoths. Got, because what can you do? You can't give them more teeth. Like you have to make them bigger. Yeah, it's just but it's the progression of the shark. It's water. You really I can't, can't tell scale unless, right until you put them next to the other supposedly big sharks, and you're like, oh, that's a big shark. Yeah, <laughs> that's about it though. Well, I mean, they just show them next to the actors, and you get a better scale. Mm. Man, we should make a shark movie with sharks that have more teeth. I mean, just more all teeth? Like, ro- yeah. well, I mean, they already have rows they of have teeth. They're like the critters of, of the sea. Yeah. Just rows and rows of teeth. <laughs> or maybe maybe just extra thing. mouths. Yeah. Or just oh, like a double-headed head. sharks. Yes. That's, that exists somewhere. That, yeah, that's I a say, thing. There's a two-headed shark there's a two-headed in some shark. movie. That's a thing. But they make like Sharknado. Octo Shark and yes. everything. Yeah, like, there are. Yeah. But even in those. There's a Ghost Shark, a Land Shark. <laughs> there you go. But they have. They're like. Sand Shark. Fucking 80 a feet shark long. Shark <laughs> That's the one where they're like 80 feet long. Yeah. yeah. Where's right. the. They made the Megalodon oh. movie, although that movie's coming to Meg, Meg, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think they shot that one. I think There's so. There's a shark movie coming out Oddly like this summer. Meg is based on a book. Feet oh, down. is it? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Meg's based on a book. I mean, they do exist. Yeah. But yeah, the sharks are like. There's a resurgence of shark movies now. Because they're. It was Shark Week, I think, became like a thing because mm-hmm. it, was thing. it the History Channel? Yes. As they? Yeah. Discovery Channel. Discovery, Discovery Channel. Yeah. So somewhere between Jaws 4 and this, there was the Discovery <laughs> this is, Channel. That, why is that your, your, your I touchstone can't to go another, back to? Well, because Jaws is the shark movie. Yes. Shark Week mm-hmm. has been around for like 30 years. That's very true. That's what I'm saying. Was it somewhere <laughs> after Jaws 4 that Shark Week became a thing on the Discovery Channel? And then they said we should capitalize on this. But there, you know, there hasn't been a shark movie not called Jaws in like twenty years, ten yeah. years, fifteen years. What do we have? <laughs> and they said we're going to make Deep Blue Sea sharks all over the place. Boom. I mean, could be. This, I don't think this uh, turned into a resurgence of shark movies. They are coming back now. Yeah, though. this was kind of a singular event. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about you never saw because. Bait? 3D? Nope. No. Shark Knight? Oh, the Shark Knight. Yeah, see? Mm-hmm. Shark Knight. 3D? I might have. The know. Shallows? The okay, Shallows. That is that, the shallows. Definitely but that's part of the research. That was last year. 47 that's meters down? Is it another, another but still, one? Sharknado was several years after this. This was... Very true. This was very... Yeah, this, this was, was like a, somebody testing the waters. Like we can let's see testing if we can the waters. Make a shark. Testing the waters. Uh, <laughs> 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 ah, see, there it is. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. That's yeah. not. See, we get bad, but not as bad as some people in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh They're man, far worse. The, pun, right, the so, puns are out of control. Or did they just? Are we? Uh, are we happy for them that they went for it? But we, you won't know until the end well, of the show. Suspense. Yeah. We're going to tell a story here. It's going to be a narrative <laughs> where it will have a shocking payoff. Right? Yeah, you gotta stick with all the way to the end. Yeah. All right, so this movie's about a research station called... Aquatica. 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 Which I kind of like. Which that name. I mean, come on. That's when was Waterworld? That was that was also well, that was like, like ninety five. Well, same area, a little bit, a little bit earlier. Than yeah, that, I think I agree. A couple because, years earlier. Well, Aquatica. The only reason I bring it up is because Aquatica is basically a bunch of uh, you know platforms on the sea, mm-hmm. except like Waterworld, except that it has a three story undersea base. Yes. So this yeah. is in the classic tradition of movies like Deep Star Six like and a, Leviathan the, like the and Abyss. The Abyss. Yeah. Right? Or yeah. Jaws 3. Or Jaws 3, <laughs> more specifically, because there's sharks in the movie. Exactly. <laughs> Trying to keep it all relatable. With a porthole that a shark at some point tries to crash into. Tries? Does. <laughs> Not as awesome as Jaws 3. It no. goes through with its snout. Here it has to throw true. something at the Very end. true. It, yeah. really, it does. It throws something. Some at the big glass. one, yeah, yeah. or someone. <laughs> what are they doing at this underwater research facility? Um, they are collecting brain tissue from the shark to see if they can apply it to human brain cells and uh, find a cure for Alzheimer's. Uh, uh and who yeah. would be doing this? Scientists, most likely, a group scientists. of scientists. Marine biologists, scientists, biologists, yeah. They're just, fucking with nature is what they're They are fucking with nature. They're playing God. <laughs> so there's that. That's and we all know what happens when you do that. <laughs> Bad things. Mother Hurricane nature is come. a bitch. Yeah. Wasn't that like yeah. the tagline of fucking Twister or something? Mother nature is a bitch. 
No, that movie. If no. not, it should have been. Remember, it, no, it was like the dark. No, the dark side of Mother Nature is the tagline. Yeah, of Twister. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, you know that. I know that because that's lo- a good movie. I love Twister. <laughs> yeah. And Twister. It's a thrill ride. They made a ride out of it. <laughs> I know. I love that ride. I love that ride. <laughs> Sorry. And there was a hurricane, or there was a tornadoes in Twister, and a hurricane in this. Coincidence? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a coincidence. Very much. Yeah, that's so a coincidence. Is it maybe uh, the Jurassic Park syndrome kicking in here? Where in what regard? Uh, well, so I was thinking about that. A big storm comes and fucks over the the people, so they can't get out of the. You know, I mean, it's a. I say it's a disaster film only because it's one of those movies where you get everybody. To your location, and it's a remote location. The support staff all leaves. So there's just a skeleton crew, and then mm-hmm. everything that possibly could go wrong, to sometimes a possibly a ridiculous extent, <laughs> yes. happens to keep them stranded in this fiery aquatic graveyard, tomb, yeah. base, underwater thing. I mean, Which is simultaneously matter. on fire and sinking. Somewhere. Yeah, that's so wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah, that's hard no, to it, do. It's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Why did they not make mention of the movie in, in that in the movie? Like we're on fire and sinking. Yeah. We are fucked. Yeah. yeah. How does this happen? Is well, it's I'm not like. as deadly as ice, Colin. <laughs> As would later be explained by one of our uh-huh. characters in this movie. Who's in this movie, Holly? Who is in this movie? Who's in this movie? Um, well, obviously, we have LL Cool J. Obviously. Who, to like me, is the, the star. To me, is the star. Um, Samuel L. Jackson mm-hmm. does make a, a significant cameo. Um, That's a not significant cameo. Significant cameo is a great uh, way to describe it. Yeah. yeah. He's got the well, the Janet Lee role in this movie. <laughs> Yeah, an extended Janet Lee role. <laughs> I when I first saw this, I legitimately thought that he was the lead guy. He was the most known commodity mm-hmm. at that time. He was, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like he's coming into your movie. And it's mm-hmm. like, wow, it's Samuel L. Jackson. And he has that moment, which anyone who's seen the movie, it's now imprinted on your brain. Yeah. I think. <laughs> and this is why I think Deep Blue Sea is like stood the test of time. Why people? Oh, know yeah. It. It's unforgettable. That one scene, that's all you're going to really remember about this movie. Yes. Yeah. But the the great thing about Samuel Jackson is you when they boil this down right now. No, no, the no, one the, great thing about Sam Jackson. No, 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 no. In particular for this role, uh-huh. um, they offered him the role for this movie, but his his character was actually another chef along with LL Cool J in the kitchen. <laughs> what? And he said, and he Damn. said no. He said no. And they're Racist. and they came back and they're like, okay, you're gonna be the billionaire that's funding this project, and you've got an awesome scene. And he's like, done. <laughs> <laughs> done. I'll be in it. Yeah. Which I mean, good for him. Really? Because why it's stick him in the kitchen? Way. Why stick him in the kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got the most the most memorable scene of the whole That's movie. That's because Samuel Jackson was like, motherfucker, you ain't sticking me in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. I love it. I'm All quoting. of the subordinates throughout the film basically just talk to him like he's a piece of shit. Oh, yeah. So that's, it. I mean, that's kind yeah. of funny. Right, I know you're employing me and paying my salary. And you know, they, and, you. But, but, and they, have, fuck off. they have no reason to. No, like, none at no. all. Just because they're dicks. Okay, yeah. they're not supposed to be dicks, but like Thomas Jane's character oh, is God, the, yeah. uh, the fish wrangler. Thomas fish. Jane. Oh, you mean, you mean broke-ass Aquaman? <laughs> he is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> this is before uh, the Punisher. What else do we know P- Thomas Jane from? Hung. That's what I know him from. Uh-huh. Well, the old Punisher, not new Punisher. Mm-hmm. Thomas Jane. Thomas Jane. Uh, like, he was in, yeah, he was in, um, like, before I went to Thomas Jane. Wasn't he in, like, fucking Boogie Nights or something? Yeah, Boogie Nights. Boogie oh, Boogie Nights. Nights. Yeah. This. And The Crow, that was before, yeah. Crow 2. Crow mm-hmm. that was before yeah, this. But, I mean, they're not, like, memorable parts, no. really. I think, was this his first starring role? What were you doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like, what were you like? Yeah, you know, Thomas Jane. Because he, he was the lead face, guy uh, in The Punisher. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Thin Red Line, Deep Blue Sea. Yeah, basically his yeah. first big one. Just a lot of small parts. Yeah, the after one that, that comes Magnolia. Under, even then, he, after this, I think 61 was an HBO movie that he was in mm-hmm. as Mickey Mantle. That's a good movie. Mm-hmm. But it's like smaller stuff until then. Original Sin. Again, that had to have been the small role. The Sweetest Thing. Which was a comedy with uh, uh, oh Applegate yeah, and, and uh, uh, Cameron Diaz and some player yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah Dreamcatcher oh yeah oh, Dreamcatcher yeah. Dream he was one of the fun, yeah, yeah he was one, one of the guys. main guys I think. that's a yeah. whole new episode that yeah. I mean, it really is that one should be <laughs> oh my god I'm glad you I'm I'm gonna put that on my list because that might actually be a good movie to All be right. here fucking mm. duddits I'd like to be here for that duddits <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and then it was the Punisher in 2004. Mm-hmm. 
So he's our basically the muscle bound uh, fish wrangling hero, he's kind of the the forerunner of the Chris Pratt uh, dinosaur whisperer in uh-huh. yeah. Uh, yeah. world. Yeah, that's a good parallel. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. very good. Well, I mean, you got to have these guys in your movie, right? He's, he's, he's the ones he's who the shark whisperer. The fish. Yeah, he's the shark whisperer. <laughs> right. It, right. Basically, <laughs> the thing that I feel like they get wrong with this though is that you don't really like him. Like yeah. I feel like he's supposed to be the protagonist, and you're just like, eh. Yeah. Like I don't like, I like him. him. He's kind of he's a dick. Yeah. Yeah, but he's a dick to the woman who I don't like. Like the well, character I, know. I don't no, like. No, like I'm not saying that he's the one I don't like. I'm just saying I don't like him, and I feel like I'm supposed to. Yeah. Mm. I think you're I supposed to like him because he performs heroic deeds. He rescues people from the sharks. He's the one who has like the yeah. plan to, you know. I mean, it's by default, right? He's the hero type. Let's just face it, we all love else. Michael Rappaport, and that's... I mean, he's the true hero of this movie, that's, Michael that's, Rappaport. That's my opinion, like, that's... I mean, this is his breakout role. Usually he just plays a, you know, a drunk Red Sox fan. Well, that's legit. That's legit. That's legit. In, uh, true Romance, that was before this, wasn't it? Uh, what about next uh, Friday? He was in next Friday. The mailman. Uh, <laughs> Zebraland. Let's not yes. forget Zebraland. Okay. <laughs> Zebraland. Uh, I think they were confused about who was their, the star of this movie besides yeah. the sharks. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Really? Like, I mean, they. they yeah. Because everybody kind of gets like, there's no like one main per Everybody yeah. pretty much gets equal around the board, I'd say. Wait, who would you say is the star of this movie? The star of this movie? Samuel L. Jackson. No. No. I mean, L. Cool J. <laughs> Ollie, you, from, you get him from front to back. I think. I think to it me, shifts it's, gears. To me, it's L. Cool J. I think it I, shifts gears. It I think does, you're supposed yeah. to be yeah, with what's gears. her with what's her name at Saffron the beginning. Burrows. Yeah, Saffron Burroughs. Yeah. No, but I mean, she, I don't think she's too. She's not likable enough to be the, the well. The okay, person you're right, actually, because maybe because she's the one who goes to Samuel Jackson and requests uh-huh. like that the project mm-hmm. be extended. So you're like, okay, is it her point of view? Right. But then, like. Once you actually get to Aquatica, that's what it's called, right? Mm-hmm. It's called something else. Battlestar Aquatica. Yeah, Battlestar Aquatica. <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like. Once you get there, all of the characters are explaining how the thing works to uh-huh. Samuel L. Jackson, which usually is the indicator that this is your audience surrogate character. Right. If you right. go with your Jurassic Park narrative. Yeah. The person mm-hmm. that they explain everything to, they're explaining it to you through them. So you identify with this person. He's the newcomer to the, right. the thing. I feel like that's how it's supposed to be in theory, but in this case, it's just exposition. Yep. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I don't be, think it reflects that that's the main character. Mm-hmm. I don't because he's supposed to like take up that role of the audience because like he, you said, everybody's explaining things to him and that's your audience. And yeah. he has in, individual scenes with all the other characters, which makes them seem subordinate to him. That's mm-hmm. true. He's the one who meets with them all. It is weird, like you said, that like you know. Most of them go on telling him like how shitty the fucking job is, <laughs> how much they hate the corporation. Or whatever. You do realize that this is the guy that signs your fucking paychecks, right. and they give yeah. you all this money to like to build this very nice place where you can do your research that is going to end up saving people. Like what? What the? F- who's got the problem here? Like what is yeah. the problem? Yeah. Wait a second. Wait a second. Something has just now occurred to me. Uh-oh. I know we just saw this movie, <laughs> but I wasn't paying attention. But now it comes back to mind. Samuel Jackson is actually an envoy for Ronnie Cox who's in one uh, fucking scene and does he say anything? Not a word. No. He's like the president of the company yep, so all right. of his scenes got cut, right? Is what yeah. We're <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because it's Ronnie Cox yeah. of Deliverance and Total Recall so. and RoboCop fame. I yep. think there was uh, I think they said that there were more scenes with Saffron Burroughs at the beginning of this but they were cut out because they didn't her character didn't come off as likable so they weren't because she was supposed to be like the main oh, character I can of see the that. movie. <laughs> I can too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I wouldn't care if she dies, and I mean we'll talk about what happens later. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's probably where all that stuff for him got cut out. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I feel guess. like well, because like I said, Samuel Jackson's character changed. They're like so they could offer him a different role so that he'd be in the mm-hmm. movie. So I feel like that his new role took away from what the other role was supposed to have. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's probably why he didn't hers, have- right? Probably. Probably. Hmm. Was the right decision made? Well, I don't know. I mean, I suppose you're saying it gives it like this kind of splintered feeling of like who's actually in charge. But I think it's supposed to come down on, you know, like uh, once Samuel L. Jackson exits the movie, which is at least halfway through and maybe more in a spectacular, memorable scene where a shark like he's got that scene where he's like, you know, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go do this. Then we're going to it's a rousing speech shot. Like, you know, we're going to see off this exit. (laughs) 
and a shark just jumps out of a pool and fucking eats him. <laughs> oh, so good. So Doesn't great. Doesn't just eat him. Takes him underground, tears him apart. Like, uh-huh. sharks rip this guy yeah. apart. He turns him into pulled pork. Yeah. Basically. basically. Yeah. This is yeah. what was kind of shocking to me about this movie. It's shocking to everybody. <laughs> this, this, the, the imprint that this scene had on pop culture <laughs> is still felt today. It's crazy. You ever seen a movie yeah. called Feast? Yes. Oh, we yeah. Don't want to ruin it for oh, people right. yes. but there's a very oh, similar right. scene. Right. Yeah. <laughs> very true. Very true. That was definitely after uh-huh. after this, uh-huh. but um, yeah. No, but that scene is it's talked about like epically. Like there's there's specific scenes from the '90s that people remember: mm-hmm. Drew Barrymore and Scream, Samuel Jackson and Deep Blue Sea. Mm-hmm. Like those are up there. Yeah. You know. Which goes to say, I guess that most of us all saw in the movie when it came out. It was that big enough of a deal yeah. that you know. I think so. Yeah. I mean, except, except for me. The theaters. Yeah, except for me. Yeah, you missed this. Didn't <laughs> Literally never seen radar. it until tonight. So <laughs> not no shark shark movies. You're just like, eh, well, yeah. on that. didn't hit your radar at any no, point. No, it, it, it literally never hit my radar. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. But now I feel like a more complete uh, teenager for having seen, <laughs> yeah, that's good. For having seen Samuel L. Jackson being I'm, ripped I'm apart. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad we can make you a complete teenager. I'm glad we can do that tonight. It's only, you know, 16 years too late. So. <laughs> and ripped apart. I mean, that was like, this is wonderful. It's, it's odd to me, like, you know, because I guess it feels like a PG-13 movie. Mm-hmm. Because Up there are maybe a, points, yeah. uh, a few fucks or whatever yeah. in there somewhere, but mm-hmm. not really. There's not a whole lot of swearing. Right. There's, There's no. Yeah, Sam Jackson nudity. was not let loose. No. Yeah. We were no. waiting for to get these motherfucking sharks off my motherfucking. But that's the, that's facility. the brilliant part about that scene because you're starting to get that Samuel L. Jackson feel, and all of a sudden shark nope. bite. Yeah. Like yeah. it's great. So, well, okay. Before I go there, the uh, but the idea that like all the gore scenes, mm-hmm. not that they're you know. It, you know, the computer graphics aren't really mm-hmm. holding up. But, I mean, they tear people apart. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. They're chomping and, you know, arms it's, are coming off. Uh-huh. It starts with Stellan Skarsgård getting yeah. his arm ripped off. Always yes. a memorable it's scene great. for me. Because I'm just because it feels like, I mean, say what you will about the movie, but it's like a visceral scene for me. Or I remember it being a visceral scene when I first saw it. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, like he had just lit that cigarette. Uh, yeah. <laughs> didn't even get to finish it. God. He took, like, one puff off of it. And yeah. Whoop, there goes the your arm and the arm cigarette. Arm is that... <laughs> Do these filmmakers have something against smoking? I think oh, so. That is was that their sign? message? Our message, oh. yeah. Because that's his smoking hand. He was uh-huh. just like, he lost it. Fucking you, fuck you, shark. It, and then he just fucking bites his arm off. Yeah. And, yeah. and that was really the beginning of the end in this movie. You know, like everything <laughs> went downhill from there. I mean, yeah. yeah. So yeah, this whole it. movie is just a giant anti-smoking commercial. I it really think. is. Wow. Well, it has, uh, I mean, it, okay, aside from trapping the people down there, which we're going to have to talk at some point about how that happens, mm. but it also, the script seems to be, and this is, you know, again, sorry, spoiler territory, but the thing that makes it kind of interesting seems to be that it is trying to uh, subvert your expectations as often as it can uh-huh. for this type of big Hollywood mm-hmm. formula film, starting yeah. with the very first scene in the movie. But in a clumsy, kind of heavy-handed way. Almost. How so? I, well, I don't know, in... Like, uh, a lot of the times it just feels like they're kind of ham-fisting their way through it. Like, okay, the the Samuel L. Jackson death scene, definitely. I did not see that coming. That totally surprised me. Yeah. There were other scenes that totally surprised me, but a lot of the rest of it was just like, oh, they're going to go down this road, aren't they? Yeah, they definitely are. And, I don't know, just the opening and closing of doors. It was such it a really, major scene. Really they really got, got, they really got to Toby throughout this. It was like half the movie is no. We have to open this door. No, we have to close this door. Oh, you got to do it like the abyss, right? You got to have those hydraulic doors right. that close this way. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not trying to close facility. into the water. <laughs> yeah, they exactly. close sideways and mm-hmm. meet in the middle. Good point. Yeah. But the yeah. one time there was a door like that, he broke his knife off in the thing trying to open it. That's very true. They did exist. Yeah, they yeah. did exist. He was yeah. able to open one of those. It would have added so much. They work. It would have added so much more suspense to it if they were like rushing for the closing doors. Yes. Like, that would have oh, added true. so much more to this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very true. Buttons and whatnot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it seemed like by this time that the movie came out I had seen, you know, other underwater things where there's, you know, water flooding down uh, hallways and people rushing for those doors and, you know, like yeah. over and over and over again. Like just three. But the thing that this does that, you know, I guess you hadn't seen before is it put sharks inside the facility <laughs> in the water. So you got like, you know, whatever, waist high water in these hallways and there's sharks mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. Super intelligent It's sharks. a whole new level. Mm-hmm. Because these sharks think. 
in re- just ridiculous. I mean, this whole premise is ridiculous, right? But, I mean, <laughs> well, we like, uh, yeah. But they think like, okay, so one of the scenes was uh, Thomas Jane goes out to uh, wrangle the sharks or whatever the hell he's doing, right? Mm-hmm. He's got they're gonna bring, like five. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna <laughs> yeah. bring a shark back so they can extract the the brain juice yeah. from it, right? Uh, uh, so he swims the out there. Yeah. <laughs> like he that. swims out there, and the sharks, you know, are attacking him through the wire cage, like right? raptors, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, from each oh, side. Yeah. Or, yeah. Have you ever seen them behave like this before? No, no. One sharks ever can't swim backwards. <laughs> My yeah, God, I mean, it's, it's very true. Yeah. These things are doing, and then one by one, the guys in the control room. The monitors that they're watching the cameras start going to fuzz. One, mm-hmm. and then the other one goes, and then the other one goes, and then the last one you see a shark swim up. And then, stupidly, after that, like then the sharks cut the power. Yeah. <laughs> the entire yes. facility, which would yes. have killed the cameras, but whatever. Why did we put the generator in, on the inside of the fence with the sharks? <laughs> exactly. You're right. Dumb move, man. I agree. I want to know how these these are super intelligent sharks. I get you, right? They think. Oh yeah. How do they know what a video camera is, and that there are people watching these things? This I can't explain. You can ask that question about so many things in this movie. <laughs> Well, like, I just wanted to start no, there. Like, this is an example. No, right, that's a good place to start. That's a good place to start. I'll this give is you the that. logic level that we're All working right, with. Where we with go. Deep Blue sea. Okay. Okay. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I got nothing for you because I they got nothing. a brain the size of a V8 engine. V8 right, John. engine yeah. Because those, I, I can only guess those lines. sharks have been around for a while. They've seen people. I no, I'm not even going to go down that avenue. Okay. Yes. Well, after Stellan Skarsgård loses, to make you scared, arm. Colin. I know because they I can outthink you. They're that smart. Yes, but exactly. at the same time, the way that you track them, uh, trap them at the end. Their heads are still... like sharks' fins. Yeah, and if you bleed in the water, instead of going for freedom at the end, they're going to come back and. Thus, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll okay. get there. I have thoughts about that scene. <laughs> God. Uh, all right. So, uh, so the 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 catastrophe. Mm. What happens? Oh, well, uh, the arm. Yeah, right. The yeah, arm. the arm comes off, so we got to mm-hmm. get Stellan Skarsgård uh, top Get to the side. chopper. But we have to get him to the chopper. Yep, yeah. got to get him to the chopper. So they call him the chopper. This is why we need the hurricane, because mm-hmm. the hurricane makes it very difficult for the chopper to get there, and the waves are too high, and like the platform's almost mm-hmm. submerged in the water. Right. So they got to uh, airlift him. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this is where like contrivance comes in, because we <laughs> yes. can't have him be rescued. No. Right? So the the winch like mm-hmm. seizes up on the chopper. It's yeah. like, what are the chances <laughs> that all of these things would all happen at the exact same time? It was, uh, the, it was the the Deus Ex Machina failed. Yes, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, <laughs> right. And it plummeted him down into the. Almost like turned this him, is a movie. It literally yeah. turned him into shark bait. And yeah. they were just fishing yeah. for sharks on a with a helicopter at that point. <laughs> yeah. And then the sharks tow the helicopter into uh-huh. the facility, yeah. which causes, I think, the biggest explosion I've ever seen in a yes. movie. That's not true. <laughs> no. That's not true. Uh, see uh, Long Kiss Goodnight for the biggest explosion <laughs> I've ever seen in a movie. That explosion is huge. And it goes on forever. <laughs> it's so big. You're so, the one in Long Kiss Goodnight or the one here? No, the one in Long Kiss Goodnight. I yeah. thought like this when one they cla- No, when they cross the bridge, that explosion yeah. is the biggest, most massive explosion I have ever mm. seen. It it is decadence to the 10th, 11th degree. This is it like is crazy. something that Rennie Harlan's this been working one, on, right? Because yeah. it's, it's Die Hard 2. Or, been building up to yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they're like, can, can I explode something? <laughs> yeah. The whole facility. Really big. It's like the whole thing was made out of gasoline. Yeah. yeah. It explodes. Explodes. Oh, why yeah. did we put di- dynamite in the cement that made this movie? I don't know. It's really good. In case the sharks hit it, then they'll blow up and they won't escape. Yeah. It is amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. An amazing yeah. sight to behold. Yeah. It really is. It's but when great. you need shit to like be blown up and destroyed so that our characters are stuck below... You do it right. That's right. That's so right. now they can't go up because mm-hmm. now there's fire. Now, uh, you know, certain levels have been locked off. Mm-hmm. What are they going to do? They're going to they live down there. But no, they can't do that because the goddamn thinking sharks. <laughs> Take Stellan Skarsgård, poor bastard with no arm, yeah, breathing really on a respirator, <laughs> underwater, and the shark has him in his mouth, in his little gurney, and throws, throws him. him. <laughs> throws yeah. him. Into the porthole viewing screen in the control room, in the scene, very reminiscent of Jaws 3. Very much so. <laughs> to crack the glass and flood the if entire. If only complex. it had been in slow motion. <laughs> yeah, which it kind of was when that one chunk of glass <laughs> well, flew out and but land on the floor. If you look at the massive amount of water flooding in, that's like your 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 secondary explosion, mm. right? And yes. Instead of you just got froth. Yes. Yep. Now I I don't know much about um, uh, pressure. 
and uh, equalizing and whatnot. Sure. But should that, I mean, wouldn't more happen if, like, they're that far down? I don't know how far down they are, but it seems pretty far. If they're that far down and that glass breaks, now, it's just the water rushing in, like, to equalize, but wouldn't something happen to them, like, just because of that... Yeah, they'd probably die. I thought that like heads would explode. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. It's yeah, just because, like well, that's what it's happens, just right? a quick change in pressure. They're just well, going, yeah, because you're yeah. suddenly flooding. All, I mean, imagine right. all of this mass is coming in uh-huh. and pushing all the right. air. I don't know what as fast do, yeah. as it possibly can. If mm-hmm. only the person who researched this movie had created a character who could explain all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a nerdy Jewish character, Michael Rappaport. <laughs> oh, all of his dialogue, like because that's why I'm like, wow, somebody actually researched this movie. I know it because he says all of the lines right. that that yes, like, his does. entire dialogue is built out of. They had, yeah. like, one script assistant, Donald, who's just like, uh, actually, if um, if they're down this low, then... Shut up, Donald. To- <laughs> I'm just saying, this would make sense in the movie. Shut up, Donald. Uh-huh. We'll get to it. That thing's gonna explode. We'll, have, we'll just give those line, Donald's lines to Michael Rappaport. Uh-huh. Boom. Yes, this is my opus. Ah, uh, Michael Rappaport. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really surprised. This This movie was written by three people. It was uh, Duncan Kennedy, who did not write anything else, hmm. and um, Donna and Wayne Powers, who wrote The Italian Job. Mm-hmm. Like the, new, the, the, Edward, the Mark Wahlberg, Norton, Mark the Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg movie. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm not really um, surprised. I think or Duncan Kennedy was the... Um, was the mastermind behind the plot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He grew up in Australia and Mm -hmm. saw a shark attack and he was like Uh. scarred by it for the rest of his life. And he had this nightmare where he was trapped in a corridor with sharks. And that's where this movie was born from. Okay. Holly, you're making a lot of sense from Duncan Kennedy's filmography. He was also the writer of bait 3d, which is about (laughs) sharks in Australia (laughs) that get swept because of a tsunami into a grocery store. (laughs) Like I said, he didn't do anything wait, else. Wait, wait, wait. I just, so <laughs> I want he has to... very specific thoughts is what you're saying. Yeah. I want you to take that in for a second. It's sharks in a grocery store. <laughs> so he has a very small and very specific wheelhouse that he's yeah, comfortable exactly. in. Yeah, basically. I told you, scarred for life. <laughs> Who do we call? Apparently so. Yeah, I haven't seen this movie. But <laughs> so he pushed a big red button and said, get me Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. And he came and he wrote another shark movie. Another shark movie in waist high water with Jesus. Yeah. So there you well, go. Well, waist high water is where most shark attacks. Duncan happen. isn't this. That's very true. Holly. That's true. That's very is it because true. you're just Duncan in it? <laughs> Toby, <I don't> know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. I don't know. You get five minutes. I'm like, what time for you? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, so after the facility's flooded and they've done their, you know, usual trying to get out, oh, Cool J is stuck on another level. Mm. So he basically yeah. gets with his bird, his own movie with, with the bird. bird. Mm-hmm. He does. Tell me about this bird. I mean, Holly, tell us. This bird, um, who's just called Bird, his pet <laughs> parrot, um, who's constantly fat butt. calling him fat butt and <laughs> telling him to feed her and calling him an asshole. Um, they did not have the budget for this parrot. So they couldn't afford a Hollywood bird. Those are like. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to be like, they didn't have a budget for a cat, so they had to get a bird. No, they didn't. They didn't have the budget for a Hollywood bird. That's literally what they're calling it. So they had to use like like Mexico birds. Oh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. So wait, I'm not kidding. What part of the documentary on Hollywood animals <laughs> exactly does this fit in uh-huh. for so us? They, they have, we haven't gotten into birds yet. We've done scorpions. They have two. Whatnot. They have two parents for this movie. They have one. For the um, shots of it flying and one for the shoulder perches. The shots Where of it. They, yeah. The shots they, of it flying. It's wings, the right? Sh- so it yeah. quote, is, the oh. shots of it flying. <laughs> yeah. That was a real bird. Sure. I actually thought when it was flying down the hallway that like, it seemed like way than bigger than the other bird. It is. It? Yes, exactly. I, it's v- like, much bigger and also fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. That is a CG bird. I didn't say they used the film of it flying. I just said that's what they used it. They just have two birds. Just fly on the screen screen, Kiki, and we'll film you and put you in the movie. Uh Uh-huh. This had to be what they did. (laughs) I agree. I've made things. I know how they do it. That was a fake looking bird. It was. It was very fake looking. Yeah. Too much motion blur. Like they, yeah. could, they couldn't afford slow motion or something. It's, I'm like, yeah, something. What the fi- birds bird, fly faster. Yeah, than that. that was the Bruce Lee of birds. It was flying too fast to be captured by film. Yeah. They didn't have the budget for a professional parrot. So what but happens? They had budget for like sharks. 
Because you do get real sharks in this movie. You do, uh, yeah. Let's talk, real, uh, let's talk shark uh, design. How do okay. No, you do. Wait, no, how what do you are you talking about? Hold on. How Define we... real shark. There are real sharks. There are real sharks in yeah. this movie. There's plenty there, of real sharks there's, in this movie. There's plenty of shots of real sharks. I give them credit for the, really? the amount of yeah. real sharks. And they, there's real sharks <laughs> in there. Have you guys never seen a real shark? Not real sharks. Not like live oh, living oh, there sharks. There we are. Okay. Okay. Oh. okay. okay. Prosthetic rubber sharks. <laughs> right. Okay. Practical sharks. Okay. There physically we go. All right. existing yeah, they physically shark. exist now in I'm, the yes. environment okay. that gotcha. they are filming. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Those kind of sharks. Okay. Yeah. Not real. Some of the close-ups are real sharks. I'm... I'm Why not- are you looking at me? They are! <laughs> I don't know, Holly. For someone who didn't watch the uh, documentaries on this DVD, I don't know if I can trust that. that I did that some research. I, I looked some things okay. up. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Take your word for it. Rennie Harlan insisted that they do some shooting with actual Makos. They went to the Bahamas, and Thomas Jane was not happy because he's afraid of sharks. Yes. There are some... Like most human beings, <laughs> yes. I admit. This is not didn't irrational. They, didn't they make him uh, save those shots for the end of the film? I think so, so that yeah. He's like, well, you can do this, but we'll have to wait until all of the other scenes are shot. <laughs> just to be yeah. sure. Case. Yeah, for the we have to kill you at the end of this. Yes. But there's practical wild. sharks in this movie, which I give yeah. them credit for, because they could have done... As you would do now, the whole movie CGI sharks. There yeah. are a lot of goddamn. Well, this is a, there was, are I think a lot the of first CGI. CGI shark movie. Yeah, I may I think be so. wrong. No, I th- yeah, I think you're right. I that's think the so. impression I had coming away mm. from it the first time was the disappointment that like Jaws did it so much better, you know, in the in the seventies yeah. mm. without seeing the thing. And now you're they're all over the place. And when you do see them, it's like, eh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, okay, they show you everything. Yeah, sharks yeah. Don't swim that fast. This yeah, is weird. I know. The, the the CGI was bullshit, but I actually think the animatronic shark was cool. I thought they were pretty I good. I thought it was I really them. great. It comes off a lot. Yeah, and I the thought design it was awesome. is really cool too. Because mm-hmm. I mean, just the the coloring, the blue, and just those teeth. Those are just like very sharp shark teeth. And yeah, just, and they uh, they scary. said that the, they said that it even felt like a real shark. Like the the skin of it felt really yeah. great. It looked good. Whenever they use practical sharks in this movie, I think it looked good. I liked it. Yeah, I thought it really played. Bravo to you. Your CGI, on the other hand, not so much. <laughs> Did not the facility so much. <laughs> feel anything like the Umbrella Corporation, the Hive? Uh, a little or bit. Just me? A little bit. Toby shaking his head. I was thinking all C Lab 2021. Okay, there we go. <laughs> all right. The whole thing. C Lab. Is there a, a, a scene where something gets flooded in the Hive? Just I thought dollars. you were going to ask if something right, is flooded in this movie. I was just like, what the fuck are you watching? Did you watch this movie? Uh, <laughs> that was an aside. Oh, no, no. In the hive, there is. they walk through a corridor where everything behind the glass has been flooded. Mm. Uh, yeah. Where the zombies are just like, and then the hand comes onto the glass. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big there's a remote. gas. Over a lot of stuff gets gas. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> this movie. Sorry. About this movie. Okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the following the the, the subsequent scenes then mm-hmm. are about these people trying to get out to the fiery surface uh, mm-hmm. while the sharks are stalking them through the hallways, the flooded hallways of the mm-hmm. installation, mm-hmm. and apparently herding them to specific sections to sink the facility because these are Naturally. goddamn fucking super short, <laughs> super smart sharks. I can't even right. say it's a tongue twister. And try it again. This is my problem with this movie. Right here, one. Yeah, okay. this is where like this is where it went overboard. I was just like, I'm done. If you had to pick one, problem yeah, with this, this movie, is like, this is yours. No, but uh, this is something they don't explain until like the very last five minutes of the movie mm-hmm. that they were herding them towards the top so they could sink the facility so that they were the fences would go down mm-hmm. so that they'd be able to escape into the deep blue sea, as Thomas Jane says. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I'm just like these sharks, as smart as they could be. They don't know. They don't know what this facility is. Like they're not. They, there's no way they can make them smart enough to understand what this place is. That goes back to talking about. I saw it happen. That doesn't make it. It's not real, Colin. It's not real, Colin. <laughs> they know what a video camera is. A video uh, system. Apparently, yeah. They're I guess you can infer sharks. they're smart enough to be like, well, if we flood this, <laughs> and then they go this way. It's like they were looking at a map together. Yeah. Like on the side of the sinking thing. Uh-huh. It's like, all right, if we get them yep, to go here, there's a little like, fin coming out. If we get them to go here. And walk up this way and go up there. Clearly you guys have no experience genetically enhancing sharks. (laughs) Obviously. (laughs) Not lately. In my teens, I could tell you some stories. Yeah, more so. Well, like the uh, Michael Rappaport's scientific explanation of like the pressure is going to come in and it's going to have so many cubic tons of whatever air. And that's, I believe all that. That's how the sharks are thinking, though. That's what you're saying. Apparently, yeah, they're all little Michael Rappaport. Much faster than he did. (laughs) Yes. 
Yeah, yeah they were there. They were always one sharks. step ahead because they're super sharp, super smart sharks. I told Say you. it two yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Super smart sharks. Super smart sharks. Super smart sharks. Super. I'm smart not saying sharks. it again. <laughs> Super sharp marks. So at this super point- sharp marks. That's what you said. You said super sharp marks. I know. That's, what you said. <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, yeah, change those drawers. <laughs> so at this point in the movie, we're having our stars singled out and separated from the group in different situations. LL Cool J is stuck in the kitchen mm-hmm. at one point. You ate my bird. You ate my bird. <laughs> I mean. How do you not love that scene? <laughs> oh, Holly's two feelings come out. He's stuck in the oven. It's great. The cook is stuck in the, the cook. Stuck yeah, in the oven. he yeah. even says the cook is stuck in the oven. At yeah. this point in the movie, I was still thinking that he was the cook, <laughs> maybe a religious cook, because well, everybody seems to have a little bit of you know, like God, why do you keep doing this to us? There's a lot of uh, you know beckoning to the Almighty, but. Later, it's revealed that he's a preacher. And I'm mm-hmm. like, where in the hell did this come from? <laughs> Somebody just calls him preacher. Yeah. And then yeah. he's the preacher. Totally is his random. credited name at the end preacher? They call him preacher the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck out. Yeah. He's a bartender, a cook, and it's a like preacher. like Sherman Douglas. And an alcoholic. <clears throat> yeah. Former alcoholic. Former, uh, well, you know. Well, I mean, he kind of delves into it in this movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. But he <laughs> apologizes, and he's yeah, just he like, does. I'm sorry. Sorry, God. I was drinking. I get it. I was drinking... I mean, I would cooking too, like, sherry for some reason. <laughs> yeah, but gross. like, who expected like him to survive this movie at all? Because it's first of all, it is technically a horror movie. I would say, mm-hmm. like, we get into the elements of this where there is like a killer stalking its victims in this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's he's surrounded by water, and mm-hmm. the old joke is that you know black people don't swim. That's the old <laughs> joke. So him being in this movie, you're just like, how did he survive? Well, that's what I'm saying, that the script is, and maybe this is what made the, the you know, an appealing, uh, um, the prospect of it appealing to the mm-hmm. filmmakers, right, was that, I mean, right from the very beginning, it kind of announces this intention. You give uh, two couples on a yacht that get knocked into the water because of shark mm-hmm. attacks, mm-hmm. and sure enough, you get shark point of view, you got the girl and the boy in the water, and the shark's coming in. You know, like, this is that scene that I've seen before that yeah. start, is your cold open, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Thomas Jane comes out of nowhere and harpoons a fucking thing and reels <laughs> it in. You're like, what the, what happened to my, like, you know, getting the people to eat bitten here? Yeah. What's the yeah. damn payoff? Yeah. Then you get Because they didn't want it to be like Jaws. They yeah. just didn't want it to be like, mm-hmm. they, they were, we're trying to subvert. saying this movie was smarter and subverted that? In, in these specific moments. But I think there's maybe enough of them that, like, kind of. It, it does something to the flavor of the movie. Mm-hmm. It kills off what I think was your main, was your expected main character halfway through the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end, then it starts, there's like a double whammy that, yeah, the three people who come up are Thomas Jane, the hero, Saffron Burroughs, the heroine, and LL Cool J, the cook <laughs> slash the preacher. The comic relief. The comic relief <laughs> of the movie. And you're like, well, traditionally in these movies, there's only room for two people at the end. Right, I'm reminded of the scene, the unfortunate scene in the movie Leviathan, where it's Peter Weller, uh, Amanda Pays, and Ernie Hudson. Oh shit! Make it to the surface, right? Like everybody else dies. A guy, a woman, and a black guy. They all get to the surface, and then the fucking monster shows up and kills Ernie Hudson at the last. Uh, Oh no, Ernie Hudson! Yeah, that was a jaw dropper, just because it was arbitrary. Like what the hell? (laughs) Sorry, Leviathan uh, people who haven't seen Leviathan, just run there. Uh, but this Fuck. one, right? They all come up. Mm. LL Cool J gets bitten. Mm. Or he gets eaten. He gets Mario Van Peebles. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I was. The Revenge, the Jaws the Revenge <laughs> reference. Yep. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, he got peebled. <laughs> Mario Van Peebles. I'm not even going to explain it. Go watch Jaws the Revenge and you'll know what I'm talking you're about. You're kind of sitting in the jaws of the shark. And yeah, right. You're just kind of hanging out. Kind of, you know, he could grab it by the front and everything. Yeah. But he gets out of it because, you know, he takes his cross. He he, he jumps, you know, the shark. Oh, <laughs> <Timothy>. <laughs> That's the happy days right now. 
Yeah, they, 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 but you know what? You have to do that because people don't know where they go. Sure. So they know the phrase. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a happy days <laughs> reference for all of you who don't know. He literally jumps the shark. Yeah, that was when that show jumped the shark, and then the movie jumps the shark. There it there is. Okay. There it is. Good all right, cover. side note. Um, <laughs> the opposite of jumping the shark is growing the beard, and it's referring to Star Trek The Next Generation when Riker is this finally Riker? grows is a this beard. Is this Riker's yes. beard? Okay. Yes. When Riker finally right. grows a beard. But, I'm glad, but you know what? I'm glad he grew the beard, because yeah, he is he creepy can. Riker without the beard. <laughs> Have you seen Riker without the beard? It's only because you've he seen him creepy. with the beard and you've seen him without the beard. I, think, like, you know, I grew the... up with Riker with the beard, so him without <laughs> right. it is fucking creepy. Yeah. There's a movie where he shaves it off, I believe. Yeah. Because he falls yeah. in love. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think it's uh, Insurrection. I think so. I think it's he Insurrection. Married, yeah. yeah, he gets he gets yeah. yeah crazy by the plan he's on and shaves off the fucking beard. He's creepy. He's creepy most of the time in that show <laughs> yeah. if you really look at it, but... But I love that the opposite of jumping the shark is <laughs> growing, growing the beard. The beard. I yeah. hadn't even heard Especially that one Especially because I'm thinking Neither did I. And it makes me sad. But it, uh, <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense. Anyway, well, back to him. Back to, <laughs> cool back to this movie. Yeah. Cool the jaws of the shark. The jaws yeah. of death. <laughs> because he's bleeding copiously. And we're like, yeah. this a man lot. is a goner. But he stabs the fucking shark in the eye right with the his eye. crucifix. Yeah. On like the 12th try. Like yeah, the he's stabbing him a lot. Like he well, stabbed him a lot. He's, 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 being, he's, being, he's, being, he's being flailed about by a shark. He's like, like 12 the inches size long of a and they're in the meat <laughs> of his leg. It is, yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> But he gets there. Yeah. Razor blades. 12 inch long there. razor blades. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, how much pain? Yeah. Oh. So much pain. That's, I, I'll give, oh, that's where I give credit to this movie. It's fucking <laughs> sharks, man. Oh. You're feeling it. Right I don't now, like you? that. That shark's rubbing the muscle oh. of its leg like, I, I, don't, I won't go in the ocean. I don't need Ooh, to. I'll marks. play in the yeah. surf. and I'll, I don't, sharks. Fuck sharks, man. Um, no. Originally, the ending of the movie, all three of them survive. And that did not test well with audiences. Really? They they did not want her to live. I'm going to take back everything that I was just yeah. about to say about the screenplay. So you're saying this was dictated by, by the audience. commercial forces. Yep. The audience said we want Saffron yep. Burroughs to die. They all, and so they uh, reshot it? They got really hyped up with the Sam Jackson scene. And they're like, that's awesome. And then they just kind of lost it with the ending. And, and um, need one more death. Rennie was here. like, what the hell? What happened? And. They they didn't really like her character. They're like mm. she's kind of the reason that this all happened. She yeah. shouldn't live. So I can see that they wrote it off. I can yeah. see that. Herein so, lies my biggest problem mm. with this movie, because these three characters, it's the end of the movie. They make it to the top, and basically, unless the whole thing, it doesn't look like it's sinking really fast. So they can hang out on top of this mm. structure for a little while. Mm-hmm. Fuck that shark. If that shark <laughs> wants to make it out into the deep blue sea, yeah. let it go. Right? What's it going to do? I mean, maybe it has little other babies and little smart Super sharks. Have you not seen Rise of the Planet of the Apes? Fuck that. <laughs> Rise of the Planet of the Shark. <laughs> Fuck that. If that shark wants to go, let it go. Well, you made it thing. from the bottom of this to the top, and you're going to fucking yeah. jump in. To no, bring seriously. Didn't they, didn't they that. tag these fucking sharks? They're research sharks. Right? Yeah. This you guy can let it yeah, go. Let it go. Yeah, and, okay, but Fuck maybe that. Yeah. Maybe they, that's dumb the stupidest they all, thing. They I, just... They just keep jumping in the water. Stop, Stop jumping in the jumping water. In the water. This is the part where I get angry at this movie. Yes. I'm just like, well, what are you doing? You lived. You made it to the top. Your whole point of from the start of this movie was to make it to the top and live and not get eaten by a shark. Fuck you for jumping in that. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. I don't care what you feel. Like this is all my fault because of my research. People die and this whole place sunk. Whatever. I would still want to live. Maybe I go to jail at some point. Who gives a shit? I'm alive. Fuck this woman and that. Mm. Why does everybody hate poor Saffron Burroughs so much? She's an attractive woman. Yeah, she was no, in no. Wing Commander the year or two before this. Uh, Wing Commander, anybody? You have a no history of this adaptation uh, of the classic video game. I okay, she, yeah. I know she was in Troy. Yeah. yeah, and she was in some movie with Jason Statham where he may have seen her boobs. But in this movie, why does everybody hate her so much? Well, we, I think sucks. we hate her for the same reason the characters hate her because she's a vapid hose beast. That's it. Shit. <laughs> Can I propose this, that her facial expression does not change throughout the movie, whether she's fe- yeah. feeling pain, anger. Yeah. No emotion. Also that. Sympathy. No emotion. No, she has the all. same look on her face. 
Jason not a very guess. expressive. She is she expressive in other She movies? has jawbreaker face. Like she looks like she's just constantly sucking on a jawbreaker. Jawbreaker face. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were referring to the movie Jawbreaker. <laughs> no, 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 no. With, 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 with Marilyn Manson and Judy Greer's in that movie. And uh, yeah. Watch Jawbreaker, everybody. <laughs> Sean's recommending Jawbreaker. There you go. Jawbreaker. Is that your next pick? Uh, no, not at all. That movie will not make it to this show. For some reason, that's like tied up. I'm like, did I see that or did I see a movie called Chum Scrubber? And they. I'm so what? Sorry. Hold on. What? You're confusing those two? Aren't they like Jawbreaker similar? and Chum, Chum Scrubber. Scrubber? What the fuck is Chum Scrubber? It Chum seems Scrubber? like it's another one about like it's a high school kind of thing with an outcast kid and there might be like crazy visions that he has. What's Jawbreaker? <sighs> Chum Scrubber? I think you're getting the title wrong. <laughs> I think it's called Chum Scrubber. Chum Scrubber? Hold Captain on. Google. This has to be shit. looked up. Chum Scrubber. There's no way that's a real it. thing. I think it Chum's... came out around the time of uh, oh Jawbreaker. God. Chum Scrubber. This is where I'm going to be horribly embarrassed. Oh <laughs> this isn't a real thing. It's called The Chum Scrubber. The Chum Scrubber. Wow. From 19... 2009... 96. Going, <laughs> Shut up, Colin. <laughs> Jesus, let me look it up. 2005. I, I was right the first time. Yeah. The Chum Scrubber. The Scrum Chubber. Yeah. The Chum Scrubber. Stop oh. saying that. You're going to mess me up. <laughs> I'm going to get it wrong, and I'm going to call it the Scrum Chubber. <laughs> a darkly satiric story about the life of a of a life crumbling in the midst of a seemingly idyllic suburbia. All right, uh, they're probably more related than the titles would have you think. Uh-huh. Wow. Right Shum in there. Scrubber. See what would happen. I don't, Jesus. I don't even know what to thing. do with that. You know, Colin, you don't have to watch every movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I'm going to say. You don't have to watch all of them. You can stick to me. <laughs> Maybe what you like and not watch every single one. <laughs> Uh, I mean, apparently you have the time to do it. Yeah, I know. But and rewatch the ones I like multiple times. Oh, it's good. weird. Oh, oh, my uh, oh my god! Oh, I'm a man on wow. a mission. You are. Yeah. <laughs> Colin is movie man. That's right. Oh wow! So that's why I've seen. Okay, so th- so this the, movie at the end of Deep Blue Sea. Yes. All right, there's three sharks. We need to say how they died. That's very true. LL Cool J kills one. Mm. He, he killed my bird. He kills it by blows it up. But in an amazing, scene, <laughs> in an amazingly, we're from not inside, possible way. Right from inside the oven. He uh, well, the shark turns the fucking oven on. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. He or escapes. does it short out because of the water touching it? No, he slams into no. it. Oh, okay. No. The, which, shark, he, the shark definitely turns it. He definitely which, got his mouth which on is it not, to turn the dial. is not as ridiculous as you think because... The, I mean, no, it's pretty no, ridiculous. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me, motherfuckers. Ears, uh, listen to me, ears. motherfuckers. Uh, the other day, I was going out my back door and my oven's right by my back door. My cat jumped up in the oven and turned the burner on by himself. Okay, that may have happened in my house as well. See? So a Somebody shark slamming into it, not that crazy. Not that crazy. Not that crazy. Them cat... An animal, and shark cat, proof. and shark proof. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would love if they shark tested uh, ovens in factories. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> shark. This has been shark tested. Right, so wait, I'm, shark not, tested. I'm not yeah, sure actually on. what happened. I'm assuming that the so the thing turned the the oven on. I'm assuming yeah. the pilot light didn't light because there was water in it. I, okay, right. That's reasonable. And that's yeah. why the gas was on. Right. You know. Like when you turn your knob on the oven and you hear the gas, but right. you don't but get you didn't the, let it click. You don't get the click. Yeah. Not enough yeah. to kill him while he's in this tight sure. confined space with mm-hmm. gas pouring in. So he escapes by axing his way into the uh the second oven. I'll say, yeah, it's a double yeah. oven. It's a double and oven. And then going out and then his idea is I'm gonna light a a lighter. A zippo the zippo that has been in my pocket and is probably soaked at this point. Yeah. And he throws that at the shark on the other side of the room, and somehow the whole room explodes because it's a Randy Harlan movie, even though there wasn't enough gas right. to do this. Okay, that's, 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 number one. Shark. Shark that's number one. That's number one. Shark number one. Shark number two, Saffron Burroughs kills in her quarters. She goes back to get her research. So, you know, this whole thing isn't for nothing. She goes back to get her research. A shark follows her into her quarters because everything's flooded at this point. Every you know, wasty boy. Everything's flooded. So she's kind of dodging the shark, jumping on tables and stuff, and she gets the bright idea to electrocute it. She's standing at a table, uses her wetsuit as a mat, pulls a, a an electric cable, and electrocutes, electrocutes the shark. shark. Right. This I is appreciated also the scene. this scene because some, she's in her I underwear. Know why. If figured in her out underwear. a way to get her into her underwear yes. that didn't seem like Because that's exactly what they were thinking when they 
uh, thought of this scene. It's How like, do we, we get her in her out, underwear? Right, we need to figure <laughs> out to get one of our female leads into her underwear. Mm-hmm. That's exactly yeah. the reason for this scene. And well, they, haven't, they haven't had a love scene, so they have Very to make true. her sexy in some way because this is going to increase her appeal and keep which the it, audience from wanting to kill her. Yeah, which it doesn't <laughs> work. Right. It doesn't work. And apparently wet t-shirts weren't enough. No. That's right. No. And the third shark. Third shark, the, the final shark. About, yeah. We've got the Jaws ending. The one that... Uh, I mean, they're all Jaws endings, if you well, think yeah, about really, it. Well, yeah, really, yeah, really, yeah. Thomas Jane gets to ride this one for a little yes. while around the... Uh, well, I think it's the lagoon, His yeah. leg is pegged to it, I think, because yeah. LL Cool J shoots him in the leg and <laughs> sticks him to the shark. He harpoons shark him. And he harpoons him. He does. Which would be a great ride at, like, Universal at this point. It's like, let's... <laughs> Being harpooned to a shark? Well, I'm not, you know... <laughs> what minus the fuck? The, minus, <laughs> minus the pain. Sure. This, this is a kid's park. Idea. Sean, we need to pitch this right now. <laughs> they had Jaws at a kids' park. Yeah, that you were was scary as fuck. You went harpoon Holly, to it. Did you ever go on Jaws? Yes, I loved it. Scary as fuck. It was awesome. My brother cried. Sorry, so Jay. did mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jay, but you cried. Like Adam, you cried. <laughs> He's been outed. Um, yeah, the uh, I can't even remember where I was going. Final shark. I mean, like, the final, final shark. shark. Gets, uh, well, I was thinking. Ella Cool Jay's probably cool never Jay. shot a harpoon in his life. Well, two most he, people have that credit. One. That's what I'm saying. Most that credit. One. The man is like now suffering from massive blood loss, <laughs> probably suffering shock. Yeah. Right. right. Because he was nearly bitten in half, right. cleaved in half. Nearly he's got to be exhausted by a shark. Yeah. And then he's trying to harpoon this. Uh, Shark. <laughs> Are you trying to think this of a different name, name for fish. it? Yeah. This aquatic animal this, with teeth. <laughs> this this uh, carcarian and carcarian. It's not. It's a mako. It's, it's, car- 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 it's, car- car- it's a great way. <laughs> it's a mako. <clears throat> it's a mako. This is a mako. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Surprisingly, like they made the decision not to make them great whites yeah. and everything. Randy Harlan them- really did. He's like, I don't want this to be Jaws. I want this to be different. One I mean, of the one of the ways was it had to be a mako. It couldn't be a great white, which is a cousin of a great white, so it's close enough, but. Yeah, I thought there was a tiger shark at the beginning. No, it yeah, was they fed to the mako. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, they only eat other yeah. sharks. Yeah, yeah. Which is weird. You, you'll know something is wrong with your sharks, and they're just like they only eat other sharks. <laughs> that's not weird, right? <laughs> nah, that's fine. Yeah. As long as we get their brains, nothing to worry about. <laughs> if they eat the brain of a super shark, smart no, uh, super smart. I like shark. where you're going. Yeah, Don't okay. stop. All right. <laughs> Since LL Cool J was bitten by a super shark. Oh shit! Super, super, super See again. This shark is shark where punches. I want yeah. like yeah. this movie to go. Like I said, I wish he would start turning into a shark. Because the music so video, we can fulfill the, the music, music video of this. Deepest, does he turn into a shark? He does. Again? Does he? Yes. What? You've never seen the music video? Oh my he God. starts turning into a shark. He's got like Does crazy he? black contacts. It's awesome. Oh, it's amazing. No. Yeah. We will post this on we our will. Facebook yeah, we have page to. this week. No I wonder, wonder that's idea. your favorite song. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> we'll watch this music video. All right. So is that Deep Blue Sea? Are we ready for some mailbag before we find out what we all think about this movie? In our that's it. Bags? We kill our last shark. Our two... Uh, Last remaining characters get saved by the oncoming next shift. <laughs> and Cool J lives. Thank God. Thank God. For the supposed sequel. Which. Deep Blue Sea 2? Which no, no. was. Deeper, deeper, deeper Bluer Sea. Deeper Bluer Sea. Bluer sea. <laughs> deeper. It was in the works. And deeper it was, Bluer Seer. A, a, yeah, a, a sequel was supposed to happen and really? it was shot down. Huh. I can imagine. They were in the they were in process of casting and they're like, no, no one wants to well, see this. Went that far? <laughs> yep. Oh, Shot yeah. down like, like a super smart shark. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, shark movies aren't. They're, no. Yeah, they're like, you know, shark movies aren't really doing anything yeah, right now. So we're not had, until way yeah. later on. But yeah, it was it was supposed As to. You're happen. listening now. Shark movies are coming for you, folks. That's right. Forty-seven meters down. Yep. Twenty seventeen. The, the shallows. The last shallows. year, everyone liked the shadows. Yeah, it was Meg. Right. At some point, and Meg with Jason Statham versus. The biggest shark in the world. Oh, Jason Statham. Uh, Isn't it Jason Statham? Probably. It was Eli Roth was directing, and he went off it. Now it's Jason Statham versus the Megalodon. I don't want to see that movie anymore. Mm. All, right. All right. Unless they build a giant shark. Well, then let's summon Igor, our mailman. Let's find out what other people had to see, but say about Deep Blue Sea. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters, Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Hey, his head is Thanks. actually a shark suit. Holy shit, <laughs> that's that's weird. Did anybody notice that before? Is it like hiding under his hat? <laughs> <laughs> weird, Igor. You should let us know. 
Very weird. Did he eat shark brains? Is that what's happening? That would make him maybe he's part shark. Super. I mean, he was put together from different pieces, so maybe he is like part part shark. shark. He's a land shark. Oh Oh, shit! Stop that. Oh shit! Shark. Yeah. All right. You know they are using shark skin for skin grafts nowadays. That's what I see. Yeah. Yeah. Shark cartilage and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's where they got the idea for this. Was ahead of its time. I'm sure they're. Yeah. This is a true story. This is based on true events. That's all. We forgot to mention this is based on true events. All right. So, how can people get a hold of us again through Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Or by email Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And the, our first comment comes from Michaela. Hi, Michaela. <laughs> Michaela, we miss she you. She says, hi, guys. Sorry I couldn't be there this <laughs> She's week. She's like, long time listener, first time. <laughs> <laughs> long time right, listener, <laughs> yeah. first time caller. Mm-hmm. Uh, where does Deep Blue Sea rank for you guys in the Rennie Harlan Masterpiece Theater? Sean. Ooh. I would say, what do we got? We got Die Hard 2. Mm-hmm. We got, what's the other fucking movie? Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Uh, I'm going to put Cliffhanger there above Die Hard 2. <laughs> Cliffhanger, uh, Die Hard 2, probably Deep Blue Sea. Hmm. That might be my top three works. And then it's like Long Kiss Goodnight after that. Mm-hmm. What else we got? Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Yeah, I'll put that. It's in there. Top five of Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Mm-hmm. Put that in there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, Toby. Cliffhanger. I'm going to go um, number one, Long Kiss Goodnight. Okay. Dang. Number two, just to throw a curveball. Dedicated to that genre. The Covenant. Oh shit! <laughs> wow. He likes that movie. Oh, you know I can't oh, tell no. if he's joking it's, or not. He's it's not. Kind of a guilty pleasure. Oh my god! I, right, I right. skipped it all together, but <laughs> God, Toby likes it. All right. And number three is Deep Blue Sea. Okay, Holly. Um, actually, I think I have to agree with Sean completely. Um, Cliffhanger, Die Hard, Deep Blue Sea. I think might be my three. I just thought three. It's mm. gotta be it. Yeah. 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 Do I have to give mine? I can just you do. Oh damn it! Yeah, you do it. I think my favorite is probably Die Hard Two. I like that better than Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger would that be number two? I like Night. No, that Nightmare on Elm Street is pretty that, bad. Yeah. yeah, no, it's pretty. Oh bad. no, you're pretty bad. It's, That's it's one bad. of my least favorite I've Nightmare on Elm Street time. movies. Um, but I do like The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Ironically, oh no, um, that was a good one. I wouldn't put that above. Cliffhanger. Well, I don't know. I haven't fucking seen Cliffhanger the whole way through. Like, I do not like John Lithgow in that movie. Oh! There I love go. John Lithgow. It's he's overacting. Wow. Like he's it's one of those things where. But that's he's an overacting villain. That's what he yeah. does. Oh, yeah. It's I perfect. Know. Yeah. Oh, him. He you can, like Cobra? The first, the first five God minutes, damn it, Colin. First five minutes of or ten minutes of cliffhanger are some of the greatest pieces of nineties action. So. I mean, it it's really true. is. But it's then true. it's followed by the last. 80 something minutes of the greatest cinema of the 90s. <laughs> I gotta watch it again. Oh, watch it's it always again. on TV. Like, oh, I'm at work, I have the thing on, and Cliffhanger comes on. It's got Rooker in it. It plays Rooker for about half movie. an hour, and then at, at like, you know, 4 30, I leave at 5 o'clock. Sure. Every time Michael it's on, Rooker's I see the movie. first half He's hour. It's good too. Yeah. Uh, then probably I would put uh, Long Kiss Goodnight and uh, uh, Exorcist the Beginning. No, I don't know. It's, uh, it's <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Jacob Laws says Dream Master is the best thing that he ever did. Oh, damn. Thanks for writing, Jacob. just all put it down. Sean Roger writes in and says Cliffhanger was actually pretty fucking good. Yep. Yeah. I tried to like Prison, but I just couldn't. Mm. Mm. Uh, Nick Hammond writes in and says, come on, the go-to shark movie has got to be Sharknado, right? No. Uh, no. no. Sorry. Just because you're here for it doesn't give it any credence <laughs> at this podcast. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Tell it like it is. Fucking Sharknados. <laughs> and Brittany Wyatt writes in and says, this is one of my favorite shark movies. Uh-huh. For shiz. Um, night of the, uh, about our episode Night of the Creeps that we did, uh, William Douglas writes in and says, Night of the Creeps is one of my desert island movies. I love that I can turn my brain off and just indulge in the fun and fantasy horror. Also, Tom Atkins is my spirit animal. I really enjoyed this episode. <laughs> Keep up the great work. He posted a picture of himself wearing a Tom. I saw he that. Did. We me. saw yeah. that. Yeah, that was sure. a great t-shirt. Yeah, that's a fan. He, is a he had fan. two. Yeah. He had Thrill Me and then another one. Yeah, that was the, great. the Atkins shirt that I think you No, mentioned. I posted that. Oh, did you post He was oh, wearing okay. the other one. He was wearing yeah. the Thrill Me shirt. Yeah. Very nice, sir. Uh, Drew Scott writes in and says, I just imagine Tom Atkins on set with jazz hands and singing Thrill Me. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised on this pad po- past podcast that the little alien guy didn't bring the e- the mailbag instead of Igor. Imagine all the ankle bites. Can you imagine how sad Igor would be? We would never do that. No, we have loyalty to our friends yeah, we here. We can't do that to yeah. Igor. Drew, 
Sorry, man. Sorry. He has a, got, yeah. You can't take his only I mean, purpose they, away. They offered, but we're just like, ah, we got Igor. What are we going to do with him? Yeah. Chris Huddleston writes in and says, I was in the same boat as Colin on this one. I didn't see it in the theater or video, but an independent TV station in my area used to show it and tons of other 80s horror movies all the time. Because of this, I wasn't aware that it was kind of a lost film. It was under the impression that it was revered as one of the best of the 80s. I watched it a few months ago for the first time in many years and reviewed it for bloody good horror. I was surprised with how well it holds up. Hmm. Nice. And Dom Cree writes in. Dom. And says, your collective reaction to this was hilarious. Brandon gets a special recommendation or commendation for the straight up babes comment. <laughs> 100% agree. Another great show, as always. Oh, Brandon. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> he was right. So, straight up babes. <laughs> straight up babes. Straight so, up babes. that brings us to our wrap-ups of Deep Blue Sea. We're going to find out what everybody actually thought. This is where we don't know. Like, I'm looking around the room. I don't know what everybody's going to say. I'm going to guess. But I'm going to hold it to myself. Uh, I thought you would. I thought you would. You do that. Okay. Who are we going to start with? Colin. Oh, shit. What did you think of Deep Blue Sea? I thought this movie was fucking amazing. This is one of the <laughs> best like pieces of action cinema that I have ever seen in my life. Don't worry, Holly. It's not that bad. Uh, it's one of those. I, I, I think the thing that I appreciated about it, it's like it does try to... Uh, I think the subversion of expectations was the thing I took away from the movie Mm -hmm. right from the beginning of that scene where we didn't kill the people at the beginning of the movie. Uh, Mm. Samuel L. Jackson getting killed was like one of the biggest surprising moments of a nineties movie. There's another one that I'm thinking of where a major action star dies in his own movie before the credits are over, but I can't tell you what it is because, because you're gonna pick it, it could no well it could ruin the movie if you, I mean if I say the title and you're like <laughs> oh that's the one where so and so tell us off my will please. off mic. thank you um, but it was in the 90s and it was another like holy shit and that's why I remember that movie because they killed like oh, the lead guy like halfway through it so whatever you do that and do it well you are guaranteed that folks are going to remember your movie. And it goes the Janet Lee, Drew Barrymore, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> yeah, that is does. the list. Uh, everyone forgets that uh, Tom Skerritt in Alien, ah, when you first saw that movie, long, right. thought that the captain is the guy yeah. who lives. Right. Uh, and so the whole Very Ripley true. thing was like, what? You know, Very back true. in 1979. Um, and the ending, you know, the LL Cool J survives, and that Saffron <laughs> Burroughs dies, you know, almost arbitrarily like, but that was the both of those shocks. <sighs> Is that enough to compensate for a terrible script? Terrible script, <laughs> <with> terrible dialogue, <laughs> uh, terrible characters. Everybody's a type, right? There's the brainy right. scientist, yeah. the boring scientist, the ethically challenged girl, or challenged, uh, the, the one who's the proponent of, like, ethics. That's all I know. Uh, who's the actress? I don't even know who that was. The blonde? The blonde? The blonde. Yeah, I don't know. Because uh, I don't think I've ever seen no, her I haven't in seen anything, her in anything before. She, was she, she, wait, she wasn't in... That wasn't her from Party of Five, was it? No. no. Okay. Because she seems like the same girl from Party of Five. Yeah. The blonde. She, you know yeah, what yeah. About. I know what you're talking about. She yeah. had that like kind of Anne Hesh thing going on mm-hmm. that the, yeah. the '90s girls had. Yeah, you it's, know, it's like she would have done better if Anne Hesh hadn't come around and taken all her roles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six days, seven nights. She would have been right in there <laughs> had not. What's like? What's that? Camera. Volcano. <laughs> she would have been in there with Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. What's that? Anna what's Hayes that? Say? I think it was Matt Damon that said um, at one point in his career, like all of his scripts had Brad Pitt's fingerprints on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like that with yeah, Anne Hesh. Like yeah. He passed on. I got. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, hey, if you make career out of it, go for it. I mean, he's doing all right now. So. Yeah, he's doing all right. <laughs> like, he's got a few things going, and he's fine. Mm-hmm. We all love Matt Damon. I saw the great. <laughs> we like that. It wasn't all that bad. Uh, oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kids movie, but um, sure. I can't remember where I was now. Uh, I just totally I mean, broke know. my train of thought. Uh, the character types. Yeah. Right? Everybody's a type. Yeah. Um, the production value. It was an expensive movie for 1999. 60 million, I think. It looks like, yeah, I mean, you know, they have sets. They're flooding with water and, you know, all this kind of stuff and practical, you know, that kind of stuff dealing with water. I think it's the practical effects. And it's like, okay, so it's a big budget movie. It's well shot. Lots of close ups, like crazy close ups. Yeah. Like, yeah. They don't do that anymore. But Rennie Harlan did that with like Die Hard. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because McTiernan yeah. did it on Die, the first Die Hard mm-hmm. and he adopted it. I think he did it 
did he do that with Ford Fairlane? He might have back in those days. Like, I mean, you basically got eyes and a mouth, you know, on the mm-hmm. screen. I think you it's get like, that in wow. Cliffhanger as well. There's a lot of Stallone. Yeah. 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 So that might be a Rennie yeah. Harlan style thing. Yeah. Um, but the CG is so bad. Um, you know, I mean, uh, that doesn't hold up at all. Mm-mm. No. And it's just, I mean, this is one of the most ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> movies that you just cannot believe that you're watching. I mean, it is an experience, and I think for that, probably you should see it, right? Uh, even though it's a terrible movie. Mm-hmm. It's awful. <laughs> but it's awful. Is it awful enough to be awesome? I'm not sure, but I'm willing to give it a recommendation so you can investigate okay. yourself. Okay. Uh just because it's like on the edge of like falling mm-hmm. over on one side and it's like, oh, that was really terrible. Or like, this is fucking crazy. It's batshit lunacy. And it's got a huge budget and all these people are in it. And it's like, how was Anaconda? Like, I remember them talking ah, about Anaconda was like this. Anaconda was a thing. But I don't Jennifer remember Lopez liking that movie either. So I don't know. I mean, I watched that movie a lot when I was younger. But is it that as was bad? A, that was a lot. Did you really? That was my, yeah. It's got fucking John Voight and Owen yeah. Wilson and Jennifer Lopez. Every once in a while you get these big actors in a movie that's like, what? Who just like, why was... Why did you do this? Yeah. You're just like, I'll watch it, but why? Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. I think... so they become a thing at some point. Like, I don't know if Anaconda stands the test of time. It doesn't have a scene like we get in this movie. But mm. it was definitely something I watched a lot when it came out. Mm-hmm. But is it bad enough to be awesome? I don't know. That's mm-hmm. what I'm warning you John about. John Boyd does there. wink after getting barfed up by a snake. <laughs> he does wink at the main character after being thrown up by a snake, and then he falls over and dies. Well, that's I will kind give of crazy. That to you, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. is it crazy enough I don't know. for it to live on? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I'm recommending this with some warnings. Yeah. That it, depending on your situation when you watch it, it could go, it could go bad. <laughs> I had a decent situation and it was okay, but I'm still sitting there What's going, like, situation? "This is just is there, stupid." Is there specifications? If you're a paraplegic, don't watch this movie. No. Like, it was he's going drinking with friends. Yeah. That's his situation. I'm coming home from work and I'm all pissed off at my boss. I sit down, like, "Will this like cure you?" I don't know. Maybe not. Uh-huh. So there you go. Anyway, I've talked enough. Sean. Oh shit. Sean. <laughs> These are the questions. These are the questions you gotta ask. Um Oh, Deep Blue Sea. I mean, it's his I mean, this is a movie from nineteen ninety nine. It is a tad dated if you watch it. I mean, obviously the CGI was where it was back in the day. Um I've seen worse for movies made at this time. What the fuck else do we like? Uh, uh The Mummy. Arrival. I don't know why that's the one that comes to mind as far as bad, like, PlayStation 2 graphics CG. (laughs) No, it wasn't that bad in this movie. But I also, I give them a lot of credit in this movie for using practical effects when they could with the sharks and everything. And I like... Oh, you were thinking of Escape from L.A. (laughs) (laughs) Is he still looking at me? Yeah, he is. He's glaring at you with some with some serious Kurt Russell glared eyes right now. I'll ignore that. <laughs> and we'll get back to this movie, Colin. Sure. Because we take our job seriously. <laughs> this movie, Deep Blue Sea. <laughs> Um, I think it's uh, it's still fun enough for me um, because, like I said, Practical Sharks, I appreciate the effort they put into that. I like the shark design. Um, yeah. Sharks in general, like, scare the shit out of me. <laughs> That's one of my big fears. Um, so the horror thing works. Yeah, the horror yeah. thing does work for yeah. me. Um, again, it is. It's a, rid- it's a ridiculous movie. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but I think, I mean, the ridiculousness makes it fun. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a movie you can laugh at. And I think, you know, maybe... Who knows what they're in 1999? What Rennie Harlan's intentions for this movie, as far as you being able to laugh at it, uh, what he took seriously versus what you laugh at, I don't know. But I think it's fun to laugh at this movie, and I think mm-hmm. there are some parts of this movie that allow that to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, ridiculous movie. <laughs> but there's a lot of fun in it um, with the characters. I mean, there's a fucking rap song at the end of this movie by All Cool J, <laughs> like. Ah. You know, my head I, is like a shark spin. It, it really, it it is. My head is like a shark spin. Oh my spin. god! But I think, like, <laughs> we're telling you now. I think if you decide to watch this movie, I think you'll know what you're getting into. But I think you can enjoy this movie. Uh, yeah, I recommend it because still fun for me. So fun. It's still fun. I like it. Still fun. Toby, first time viewer. Yes. Um. To to piggyback on Sean's comments. Um. 
it is definitely a fun movie. Um, I went into it with no expectation. <laughs> I literally knew that it was. Uh, you sounded like you enjoyed it. I really did <laughs> because every time there was like a completely ridiculous kill, I just cracked the fuck up. Um, I thought that this was a lot of fun. Um, if you go into it and don't take it too seriously, you're no, gonna have a no, good no, time. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't go into this expecting that is uh, a shark 50, week. That is a fifty foot shark on yes. the front of this movie, right? Here. <laughs> At least fifty. Yes, that's like uh, megalodon size. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the dialogue was a little stilted at times. Obviously, the CGI is a bit outdated, but. Man, um, if you want to see a chef climb into an oven to escape a shark attacking him, yeah. this is the movie for you. <laughs> if you want to see LL Cool J as a chef yes. climb into an oven. <laughs> no, it was a lot of fun. Um, I would recommend it. You have to watch it at least once. I yeah. think everyone should watch this movie at least once so that I can talk to you about it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> about it, so. I'll watch it again. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, if nothing else, you have an awesome, awesome rap song by LL Cool J. That's right. End, so. That's right. <laughs> Which you only get to enjoy if you watch the movie from front to back. Right. Did yeah, we mention totally. that? Like, you only get to... That's the only time you get to listen to this. Right, it's not featured in the film. It's just the end yeah, credits. Yeah, you so. can't watch it otherwise. You're not allowed it's to listen to rules. it otherwise it's unless you rules. watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you can. But yeah. I would recommend watching the awesome music video <laughs> where LL Cool J is part shark. shark. On the fucking disc? Are we watching <laughs> that? If I don't know why. Remember back in the day where they would put music videos on the fucking yeah. tapes? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. As it were. Like Dream Warriors yeah. at the end of uh, yeah, Nightmare uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Batman Forever, Kiss yeah. from a Rose. <laughs> oh. Fucking A, dude. My, yes. life, my life summed up yes. the very few things right there. Yes. Houdini on uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Okay. You say things. No, stop it. Houdini? Stop it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Holly, for making us watch this. You and, are um, very welcome. <laughs> on to you. Deep Blue Sea. Okay, so. Okay. This movie. She's like, I hated it. <laughs> you like, I don't <laughs> like this. Like, movie. You all I are idiots. It a joke <laughs> and you all took it seriously, and I don't understand you at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, this movie is so ridiculous, and I love every second of it. It's, it's just. Oh, it's so great! It's it was. I, I wish you guys could remember. Like this was a serious moment in like the MTV generation. Like LL Cool J was was pretty big at the time, and the music video. Everyone was just like, "This is the coolest! LL Cool J is a shark!" Like oh it was God. so awesome. Somebody buzzed a shark in the back of my head. <laughs> so cool! And I I really loved this movie when it came out. And then fast forward a couple years later, I was on a missions trip in Harlem, New York. And I went to Rucker Park with my group, and I met LL Cool J, <laughs> and it was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. Like, oh, was, my God, it was me. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. I was so excited, and he was so nice. He was so gracious. He kept calling me baby girl, and I think he was kind of hitting on me. <laughs> but then he asked me how old I was. I said 17, and he told me to sk- stay in school. And it was the best <laughs> moment of my life. <laughs> that's great. Like, oh, that's great. Stay in school. I love it so much. So I, I just I have so much love for He's this smart movie. smart guy. Great. Yeah. He's smart guy. <laughs> he was so casual about it. He's like, hey, baby girl, like, what are you doing? And then he's like, are you with... <laughs> he's got his arms like, oh, shit, stay in school. <laughs> like, he, like, no, seriously, I think, he, I think he realized I was wearing, like, the same T-shirt as the other, obviously, like, children. And he's like, how old are you, girl? And I was like, 17. He's like, girl, stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> Man, maybe even go to was, college. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was like just I'll see you in a few years. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's Best weird. moment of my life. <laughs> the shitty part is that this was when we had like Nokia phones, so no one had camera phones. Right. I had a disposable. I took a picture. All you can see in the picture is a big black dude and someone wearing a Nike t shirt. That's all you can see. Oh, no. It sucks. Oh. You're like, so, no, that's LL Cool J. I promise. Like, I promise that's me. That's Cool J. The ladies love Cool James. That's him. <laughs> so, yeah, I love LL Cool J. I just, it was like the best. And,. I, I like. I just wanted to end with that because I agree with everything you guys said. <laughs> the shark was cool. The movie's fun. Mm. The script sucked, but <laughs> this movie is so much fun to watch. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. It should not be taken seriously. No, but it's hilarious and it's it's a good time. I mean, it's a memorable shark movie. 
It really is. Whether you love in a, it. In, a, in, a, in an age when we didn't get memorable short movies. <laughs> <Yeah. that's right. laughs> For whatever reason. Whether you love it or the, whether you love it, you hate it, you're always going to remember the Sam Jackson shark scene. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's great. I recommend it. I think you'd, I think you'd have fun with it. Yeah. That's it. Right. Well, there you go. All right, All right. So that's Deep Blue Sea on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Next week, we're going to watch a movie chosen by... Mi- Michaela, <laughs> Michaela, what are we watching next week? Um, I don't know. I think we're gonna watch. <laughs> a that's not how she that's sounds. That's not how she sounds. <laughs> I think I have the down. weirdest boner right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, she she dropped <laughs> off. Uh, we're gonna be watching. <laughs> She were continuing. I mean, I'm glad I could do that for you. She is she's out of town. So Oh boy. You. I miss her very much. I miss her very what much. What happens after oh the podcast? Dave's after the podcast. You're gonna oh tell us God. about that thing, right? Is <laughs> she gonna keep me safe, Colin? <laughs> So sh- what we're watching, <laughs> we're continuing so, the summer of canon okay, films. Summer of, can- summer of canon. And we're watching Breaking. There. Breaking. Oh, oh breaking. shit. Coming. Oh, breaking. Shit. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And as always, now we're going to go pay our electric bill. And the basement <laughs> is going dark. <laughs>